Thank you, Jesus. David said, I was very glad and glad indeed when they said, let us go in the house of the Lord. Because he had a clear understanding that it is in the house of the Lord where there is peace. It is in the house of the Lord where there is joy. Outside the realms of the presence of God, there is confusion. Amen. Out of what? The realms of the presence of God, there is confusion. That's why David, at no time in his calling as a king, as well as as a prophet, there was never a moment he leaned or he, he put his trust on man. It is even recorded in the Bible that woe unto them that put their trust in who? In man. For man in himself is folly. So his trust was in the sanctuary because he understood that in the sanctuary, that's where the solution is. I come to encourage you. You are not in a wrong place. You are in your father's house where you will lay your petitions today and he will answer you. Not because you are a sinner, but he will answer you based on the mercies of the blood. None of us, as we are gathered here, are worthy to stand in the presence of God. It is his blood that pleads for you, that pleads for me to enter the Holy of Holies. I haven't started. I'm only giving you a gist of where we are going. Today, the fire of God is going to rain. The enemy likes it or not. He's going to see that there is a God who reigneth in the city of Chingola. Uh, I speak this with no shame. I speak this with boldness. For he said, enter the house of God with boldness. I came with boldness. Knowing that it is not me that shall speak, but it is him. Father, we thank you. Say thank you, Jesus. For your grace. Your mercy. Your favor. I'm in your presence. Give me the grace to remain in your presence by your word and by your spirit. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. May the congregation be seated and sit on the head of that enemy, the devil. It is not your uncle. It is not your auntie, but it is the enemy that has found refuge in the weakest point in your family. Amen. May I take this moment to recognize the presence of my mother in the spirit. Mama, my knees are on the floor to honor you. My mother, I cannot stand before this multitude, if not be your prayer, you and I, you have entrusted me to stand on this altar. I want to thank God for what you have done for me and my family. Mama, God bless you. Thank you, Mom. Amen. Shall we boldly open the scrolls? To understand the word of God. Amen. Open the Bible to the book of Leviticus 17 and the verse number 11. I believe this is a very familiar scripture. You may have read it time without number. We are reading from the book of Leviticus. And we are still on the same journey of the blood and the flesh. We are still in the same theme that we dwelled on 
Wednesday, and even before that, our Father introduced us to this word. We are still dwelling on the same bread. Amen. Leviticus 17 and the verse number 11. The Bible says, for life of any creature is in where? In the blood. I will not go further than that. The Bible says what? The life of any given creature that ever existed, that is existing, that to ever exist, its lifeline is in the blood. Tell your neighbor, your lifeline is in the blood. Uh, say it with confidence that your life line is in the blood. That's why servants of God, fellow believers, it was the number one priority, number one priority for the enemy to search for the blood in which our Savior would be born in so that he may corrupt it. I know for now you will not understand, but as we go down the scriptures, you understand. We are dwelling on the subject of the authority of the blood of Jesus. The authority of the blood of Jesus. Sense of God. As I have laid it, life is in where? In the blood. Any living creature, for it to exist... It is because blood is flowing in the veins. As you are seated there, as I am standing here, there is movement of the blood. That's why there is life in me. If there was an opportunity for someone to drain blood out of me, I would not exist. And the Bible here is saying that for any creature that existed and is existing, it is because of the blood. What is this blood? To make you understand, blood in itself represents life. Blood in itself, it is a token, it is a currency. Just like if I, if I get, permit me. Let's assume that this is an ATM card or credit card. The assurance of you going into the shop and be able to get commodities, it is because this particular document, in it there is authority. To necessitate you to go and get any commodity on the shelf. Why? Because you have confidence that in this card, it is programmed to store power. And that power is the buying power. In the same way, blood in the spirit is a currency. It is sad that even for men and Christ, we do not have the understanding of the potency and the importance of the blood. Blood in the spirit realm, in the realm, is a currency. If someone is held ransom, it will require a recompense for that person to be released. I mean, if my brother here, they abduct him, what are the abductors looking for? For them to release him. It is money. And that money has the buying power in it. The same way, in the realms, blood is considered to be a currency just like kwacha, just like dollar. You need to understand this. That's why God values blood. Because in the blood, that's where life is.
blood is life. I've given you an example of a credit card. You have the confidence to walk in any shop because you know that that piece of plastic is a legal document to permit you to buy things. You know that the money that you are carrying is a what? A legal document to authenticate you, to necessitate you to be able to get any product worth the amount. But I want you to understand that the blood of Jesus is not only a currency in the spiritual realm, but it is a solution to your life. It is not just a currency, but it is a solution to your life. Because without his blood, you and me would have not been redeemed. Because of this blood, you and I, as I said earlier, we have the audacity, the authority, the power to call the name Jesus and Jesus will turn and attend to our need. Why? Because of the blood. That was shed where? On the cross of Calvary. Now the question is, how does this blood operate in favor of you and me? This is the blood that is not corrupt. It is not the blood like the blood that is flowing in me. This blood is an incorruptible blood. That's why that the blood of Jesus, the coming of Jesus Christ, the enemy was not happy. He started killing Abana. The reason he was doing that was to try and locate where is this bloodline coming from? This king who shall redeem mankind. In which line, in which bloodline is he going to come from? I want you to understand. If there are people here in the medical circles, they'll, and they'll, they'll tell you that umuntu onso ufialwa, it is because of the blood. And it's not the blood of the woman, but it is the blood of the man. Get me right. It is not the blood of who? The woman, but the blood of the man. If there is any medical person here, a child's life or the blood that is in the womb of a woman, it is the deposit that comes from a man. So the enemy had the understanding. To say, this blood, there is need for us to locate this blood to corrupt, when we get it, we will corrupt it so that if this lamb that is to be born in the person of Jesus Christ, who would come and redeem man, if we corrupt it from the very beginning, he will not be able to redeem man. But God being God, he made it possible for Jesus Christ to enter the earth realms by ensuring that his birth or inception of Jesus Christ was not as a result of man. Why? Because the blood that is flowing in your, in your body, the blood that is in me is corrupt. How? The foundations. Where are we coming from? The foundations where you and I are coming from are corrupt. But the blood of Jesus is pure blood from the throne. The womb of Mary was just used as a carrier. That's why when you mention the name Jesus and you add the word blood, it troubles the devil. Why? Because this blood is pure. There is no sin in this blood. Drink this blood. If there's anything in me, in me, we hear reactions. Why? Because the seed that is in us, the blood that is flowing in us is corrupt. When it comes in contact with the pure blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, and Mashiach, it, oh, it reacts. 
The blood in you will have no option. If there's anything within you, it will come out. Fiala fuma. Nishi, because pure blood has come in contact with you. Number two, one thing I want you to know. The blood speaks. If you take the example of Abel and uh, Abel and Cain, it is a typical example of how the blood of Jesus worked for your advantage. That blood is still speaking for you. The blood of Jesus is still there speaking for who? You and me on the mercy throne. It is a currency. And each time you call upon it, each time you invoke it, the personage of Christ come into life. The only lo tuwa lumbula pali Yesu Christu, uriomulo pa, ulesa, and it stands in our stead. Let us go to Ephesians, Ephesians 1, verse 7. Those of you that are there can help me. I want you to understand something. Ephesians 1 verse 7. In him we have what? Redemption. C can you just read through again for, for the sake of the congregation to understand? J just start from the beginning. In him we have redemption. In him we have redemption. Through his blood. Is it through his name? Uh, church, I want you to help me. Is it through his name? His office as Jesus. Remember that the name Jesus is his office. The Bible is saying through what? You were redeemed through what? His blood. Uh huh. Go on. The forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins came as a result of the blood. In accordance with the riches of God's grace. In accordance with the riches of God's what? Grace. It is not the office of the name Jesus. It is not the lordship of the name Jesus. The reason I'm bringing this scripture, I want you to understand the authority that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. By virtue of it being the pure blood. The blood that is not corrupt. The word redeemed means that you were bought. You were claimed. You and I, we are coming from foundations where our forefathers sold our lives to the spirits. I want you to understand this. Your life, my life, is corrupt because of the foundations where I come from. The set beliefs. But the Bible there is saying you were redeemed. The word redeemed, sense of God, means you were claimed. Or the other word that can replace, uh, replace redeem is ransom. You were bought. From the very beginning, our forefathers were in search of God. And in the end, what happened is that foundation and the enemy took advantage of the, the minds of men for not understanding. He meant a pact with them. Oh, if you are going to fire, you are going to fire. 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 Today we have these marine spirits. It is from that foundation where your forefather said for me oh, to have money, carry my virgins. They are your wives. That's why a man of God lays a hand on you. Hey, who are you? This is my wife. Physically, you are not married. But the foundations 
the ordinances, the altars, the covenants are claiming you because of the blood that your forefathers shed on the altars that were evil. And those, that blood is speaking. They have a legal ground over your life because of that foundation. So they are saying, this is our wife. According to what? The covenant agreement that we made with his grandfather. We've heard stories here where someone begins to say, Ni shule mchupira. Tawishi batu esuyu. Walishwe uyumuntu kwa fuma. Ifwe tuba tuliba hushi. All these ishimu mfwe mikowa, they've got foundations. All these we are tuliba enangwena, tuliba enamboa. They have a reason why they are called venamboa. There is a reason behind where they are called, why they are called to the Benangwena. They were appeasing these spirits in the waters. And these things, because of them being appeased, they claimed their life. Remember that from the very beginning, Lesa Apeliomuntu Amaka, authority here on, on earth to govern the earth. But that authority was seated through the actions of man. Your life, my life, is in this state where we are today. Truthfully speaking, because of the foundations where we are coming from. Lamentations 5-7 is saying your forefathers sinned. And it is you and I who are bearing the cause of the acts and the involvements that they were in. There is nothing that you can touch with your hands. You start a business. These demons are claiming you to say, We saw a pelele panjinga. Hamba. Aba fiashmunok namesh wa hamba. Ninjinge shakalesh. Epo a pelele. You walk to a quarter yama wiro yabi. Four. Accident. Uleleta fiok fumakuna kondyam. Ama wido mumuru. Beyond repair. Uh -huh. If he ever to fly amule ikala. I came to encourage you. That there is a blood. That can redeem you. From the acts of your forefathers. And that blood. Is still speaking for you. All you need to do. Is to claim your own and say. I'm no longer. In this foundation. I am a new creation in Christ. It is no longer me that liveth, but Christ in me. When you make that declaration, you are speaking the blood of Jesus to cover you. Jesus will not come in a robe and stand in front of you. It is the potence of the blood of Jesus that speaks for you. This confrontation, it is beyond you. One thing you should know, as my father is seated there, the blood that is in him, it is older than his age. Ah, you don't understand. It has its history, where it is coming from. You are not the first Musonda. There is someone behind. And is where? In the bloodline. That's why the sin that lies in the bloodline is dangerous. If we care, we need to revisit the foundations and begin to reverse whatever that was spoken in the lineage of our bloodline to say this is an anomaly. As long as I am here, I am standing as a priest of this family. I am coming against you, you powers of darkness. Whatever my forefathers entered into, it ends here. Because the blood of Jesus, according to Ephesians 1, 7, it is saying I was redeemed by his blood. It is not just a matter of talking blood, blood. Have the understanding of this blood and the authority that this blood has for you. It is for your benefit. It is for my benefit. 
Each time we invoke this blood, we invite Christ to stand in the gap and say, he, I died with him. What do you want to do to this man? He's no longer part of this foundation. I am the foundation on which he is standing on. I want to give you this example. My brother, come, stand here. Can I have another person? Edson, brother Edson, come. I want you to see this picture. This is a person. And that man, let us impersonate him as Jesus. Oh, let's, let, let me give this picture that is clear. Jesus is here. And this man, this is what Jesus has done for you. Instead of you paying this man in Kongole, Jesus Christ died and he paid so each time the devil because he has a history of where you are coming from he says your forefather was a witch doctor by this age you have reached you are supposed to be a wizard how dare you stay in an office as a CEO he will begin to trouble you but if you claim to say I am in the blood of Christ Jesus Christ, because he bought you, and you, you are praying before him, it is not, is it up to him to begin to, to claim? It's Jesus Christ, who is supposed to say, Mulekyo you. I've already bought him. I've redeemed him. I was the last ransom for mankind. Devil will say, Uyu, Jesus Christ will say, this one is mine. From the day he accepted me. From the day he drank my blood, I'm in him. If you want to deal with him, come and deal with me. And Jesus Christ will stand in front of this man. Each time the devil would want to come, he will not see him, but he will see Christ. And Christ, Christ being who he is, is pure, his light. The devil cannot come to light. Why? Because the Bible says, what has light and darkness in common? I came to tell you, if Christ is in front of you, the enemy will not be able to see the dentent history. You will not be able to see what your forefathers did in you. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. That is the work of the blood. Each time the enemy wants to come to you, Christ will stand in front. It is no longer him that does what? That liveth. But Christ in him. And here I am. You have no case with him. I have redeemed him. Deal with me. I died for this man. That is the work of the blood. Tell your neighbor, that is the work of the blood. You are not part of the foundation. Stop having a mindset. <laughs> Claim the blood. Claim the blood. Claim what? The blood. Say blood of Jesus. This is not in my vein. This is not part of me. As I see you, you are a success. When I look at you, you are light. What am I doing in darkness? This is not my portion. I've chosen to follow you. And Christ will come in position. And claim your innocence. That's why Christ went 
and sat on the right hand of the father where he does what intercede on your behalf each time the accuser because it is his job the bible says he is the accuser of who the brethren and this duty he has not stopped the devil has not gone on holiday for your own information each time you fall short of the glory of god he goes before the throne and say hey, hey, this one oh, i have the dozier and the dozier is saying but because of the blood that you drank in the family of Jesus, church of all believers, on that day when our father received a prophetic declaration, you defeated the enemy hands down. And each time he brings that dozier, that Jesus Christ says, sorry, devil, you are late. This man drank my blood. Look properly. Who are you seeing with him? Who is he moving with? So, the blood of Jesus Christ is a ransom. A ransom is a payment that was made on your behalf, on my behalf, to redeem us from the works that our forefathers entered into that caused you and me to lose the position. The authority, the true identity was lost. But Christ died for you. And that blood is still active. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that there is a blood that speaketh greater things than the blood of Abel. And that blood is the blood of Jesus. And it is still there. And it is still speaking. Allow this blood to speak for you. As we are going to enter a moment of prayer, a moment of declaration, remember that this blood is still active and it is still speaking. As it spoke for the people of the old, it is still speaking for the people of today. And that people is you. Amen. Lastly, shall we open our Bibles to the book of 1 Peter 1 verse, verse 8, 18, sorry. 1 Peter 1 verse 18. My brother, you can, you can help me. 1 Peter 1 mm. verse 18. Verse 18. For you know, for you it, know, it was not with perishable things, it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, such as money, such as gold, such as material, such as what? Any other thing that you can think of, but what? That you were redeemed. From. But you were redeemed. The empty way of life. The empty way of life, meaning the meaning, meaningless what? Life. You were emptied of it. Uh-huh. Handed down to you from your forefathers. Handed down. To, what was I telling you? The vain what? The vain life. The life of witchcraft. It was handed to you. Gen there are certain families, generation to generation, there is a set belief that follows them. Why? Because it is in the blood. There are families who are like that. There are people who are like that. 
To you who are blind, you will say, how many swords were favored? Pray. You will find out that there is something that person is using. He's using mediums to attract the attention of men. It is not beauty. The Bible there is saying that you were handed down with my brother. Let us just read this through. Step by step. Verse 18. Yes. For you know that it was not with perishable things. It was not with perishable things. Such as silver or gold. Such as silver or gold. These are earthly things. Uh-huh. That you were redeemed from the empty way of life. You were redeemed from the veilless life. Uh -huh. Handed down to you from your forefathers. The key word is handed down by who? Is it by God? No. It says by your forefathers, isn't it? By who? By your forefathers. Uh -huh. Go on. But, verse 19. Yes. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish. A lamb defect. without blemish. Sister Constance, redeemed you. A lamb. We are coming from foundations that were venless, that were hopeless, that trusted in trees, they trusted in waters, and these things worked for them because. There was a spirit behind that river that gave them that fish they were eating. Those trees, there was life. And that life was a spirit behind them. To them that was God. Not until they started betraying that God by not killing their firstborn sons, by not sleeping with their own daughters, that spirit behind that tree, behind or in that river, started to demand, to say, this is what was happening. What is going on? I'll start slaughtering you one after the other. I came to tell you, there is an antidote. And the antidote is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ went to the cross to shed that blood in order to reverse what our forefathers did. The Bible says, by one man, sin entered earth. And by another, in the person of Jesus Christ, we were redeemed. I came to tell you, the Redeemer is in the house. The Redeemer is where in the house. It is up to you and me to call upon the blood of the Redeemer to renew our destinies, to renew our businesses. Your business is going down because there are forces that are behind what is happening. Nothing in this world just happens. Life, I repeat, and I'll always drum this. Life is spiritual. Anything that you see, even a tree, the Bible says, for the earth awaits for the manifestation of who? Meaning even the ground that you are sitting on, it is got, it is got what? Ears. The trees, they've got ears. If that is not the case, how did Jesus Christ speak to the fig tree and it obeyed the voice the following morning it dried? Where has that power gone? Where has Memlaka? Memlaka is authority. Where has that authority gone? That power. The sense of yesterday were moving in it. They were experiencing it. They were living it. They were walking it. Why are we not walking in it? The lives that we are leading. They are corrupt. And God cannot be attracted to a person whose life is corrupt. The power of God cannot be in operation in your life if your life is twisted. Ukulu kumo, mumesh, kumbi, pamush, te tifibombe. 
unless until such a time we make a decision to say my life is for Christ all these other things have come out of them I have chosen to follow God sin power over me is broken I want us to ref reflect as this song is being sung, sin power over me is broken. How was it broken? Because of the blood. Somebody in the person of Jesus Christ had to shed pure blood for your redemption. Sin power over me is broken. Sin's power, sin's power over us is broken. When Jesus waits, when Jesus waits, when he waits, when he waits, sin's power. Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. 